Hey, I'm Taylor Craig. I'm Ryan Keelan. I'm Alex Wiesa. And welcome to the Pucking Panthers Podcast. We don't give a puck. Well, we're back after a huge offseason and uh, a lot of moves being made. Yeah, uh, we changed the whole defensive unit around basically. Yeah. A whole new defensive core. By Good Branson. By Campbell. By Kulikov. Hmm. By Mitchell, I guess. Ryan, what do you think about the defensive course? I, I, a lot of people on, a lot of the fans on Twitter and everything have, they have their own opinions about what happened. What do you think? Um, I think it's going to be a really big loss losing Kulikov. He's the heart and soul. He's been here since two, like 2009, and that's going to be tough. He's the leader. Dude, he's a silent leader. He's a silent leader. How do you think about CVR, the new addition of CVR on the offense, taking his number seven? Um, that was a really um, Bush League move. <laughs> he needs to know that when that number is going to be retired one day, <laughs> and if you're going to take it, the, the, first of all, the longest tenure the, the, during the bad the, years, the organization should have stepped in and said no, but <laughs> maybe they'll realize their mistake later on in the season. We picked up Keith Yandel, we picked up uh, Demer. Pissick in the Kulikov trade, Demer. Demers from Dallas, he was an unrestricted yeah. free agent. Hold on, which we called, which we called, play it back. So I think uh, the Panthers should really make a play at Jason Demers. Call I'm pretty it. sure a lot Call of teams it. probably were calling that because I was, mean, I mean Yandel and Demers were the top two unrestricted it would free agent I mean, it's obvious we're moving towards an offensive, hmm. defensive core, yeah. I guess. More puck moving, kind of like the Stanley Cup winners, Pittsburgh Penguins. I think it's going to be a little bit challenging in the beginning for them to get a little um, chemistry going and okay. not really having those defensive players, they gotta kinda see who can step into that role, especially on the penalty kill, where now four of our defensemen that had the most total on ice time last year in the penalty kill are all gone. Yeah. So we're gonna have to see if Ekblad could stand step up. I'm pretty yeah. sure Demar's gonna play on the penalty kill. You know Petrovic's gonna get a lot of yeah, time. Yeah, Petrovic's gonna get a lot of time. Pissick nice. is also yeah. a pretty good defensive, yeah. reliable defensive player, I, I heard. I think a byproduct of what you're going to see with uh, with this new additions is our power play. I think we're going to go back to the two forwards on both. I mean, the two uh, defensemen. Oh, yeah, for sure. Unit. Yandel and Ekblad. Come we on. have four. Our top four defensemen are Ekblad, Yandel, Matheson, and then Demers. I don't I don't mind yeah. putting and then, both yeah. those. So, Gallant, he likes play. also, with like 30 seconds left in the power play, he'll throw like McKenzie out there. And, like, <laughs> and, like, I hope uh, we're not seeing that anymore. So, yeah, so that we'll see that a little bit, too, on the power play. <laughs> hearing a lot of fans saying on Twitter is that now we don't have big checking defensemen oh. and now we're going to be bad at defense because yeah. we don't have that which honestly to me does not make any sense at all because you don't need to check to be a good defenseman if you get your stick in the lane and you get that puck and you're able to get it in the corner and get it yeah. out of the zone not just dumping it down the ice and actually being able to get it up to a Huberto or a Barkov or a Trocheck and have them streak down the ice yeah. I think that's a little bit better than a good Branson who would usually just yeah. get the puck and just ice it, it down and ice it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now we have people, and if you're watching, uh, players was like the Yandel, league leader in icing. I made that up, but like you, play, you believe, okay. you players it. like I would believe it. Players like Yandel and Demers, they're very good at getting their stick in the lane there. Yeah. They're not. They're not going to lay that big hit. You know what I mean? Like good Branson did. But who cares if they're going to be able to play defense and get, and get their sticks there? Okay, the highlights. No more highlight reel. Yeah. Checking over the the. See, the, the I like, what over what I like to say is, hit on is if we have the puck, they don't, and that means exactly. they can't score. Exactly, exactly, and that's what it's going to be this year with players that have. I mean, if you want to look at it at, at an analytic way, hmm. yeah. great Corsi, great. Oh yeah, you know what I mean. The reason why the reason score. why we predicted that Demers would get signed was because his Corsi was through the roof. It, it's great, and, yeah. we, and it was another right-handed shot. Dave Barr, who's a power play specialist, he. he in Buffalo, they were really good on the power play. Yeah, so they had a really formidable power mm -hmm. play, and I am so excited to see Ekblad and Yandel on the ice together, working with each other. I, I, a power play of, of Barkov, Huberto, put anyone, Yager, Smith, I don't care who's yeah. on the other side, and then Yandel and Ekblad, oh my People god. People are talking about how good Ekblad's going to be in the future. Right now, Ekblad and Yandel on the same unit might be one of the best defensive units in the NHL. In the Atlantic Division, for sure, I think. For sure in the Atlantic Division. I think so. Yeah, it, it, again, going against Eric Carlson and whoever you put him next and, to. And if you want to talk about Yandel's defensive troubles, which some people like to bring up, yeah. Ekblad is so reliable defensively yeah. that he's going to pick up any slack that Yandel might have yeah. defense, in, on the defensive side, you know? Yeah. Speaking of Ekblad, uh, he did. He was at the World Cup of Hockey. He did get a mild concussion, which is important to make that distinction. I know people are like, oh, it's brain trauma. Of course it's brain trauma. 
But the mild concussion, that's just diagnosing what is exactly is wrong. And apparently two days later, he felt fine. Another defenseman I want to talk about is Adam Party. Yep. We signed him to a PTO. Yep. Um, I believe he was in Edmonton or Winnipeg, one of those. Party was in Winnipeg. Well, he India. really didn't play, the so only, he's probably yeah. garbage. The only way you'll remember Party is the guy who checked through the glass and then somebody stole his helmet, the drunk guy stole his helmet and started drinking beer. That's but funny. Continue. But yeah, but Party, I mean, Gallant, um, Gallant did come out and say that he does want a defensive defenseman out there since we kind of got rid of all of ours. And uh, Party, I guess, fits that bill. He's huge. He's 6'4", 220 pounds. He's a, he's a big defenseman, you know? I, I mean, I wouldn't mind, honestly, signing him, having him be that 7th or 8th defenseman that sits out with Camphor, maybe. And maybe we put him in when we're playing bigger teams like, like the Bruins, and we need a bigger presence there on the defensive side. The uh, thing that I would argue with Manu. Party is that we have so much defensive depth. Yeah. And that's like extending way beyond the six that we can allow. And, and what did you, you have Makoshian fight? That's what I'm saying. Wouldn't you yeah. rather see Makoshian there other than Party? You know Absolutely. what I mean? Yeah. Makoshian has a chance. Um, I do think he would benefit more in the AHL. Mm -hmm. Makoshian has a chance. Holtstrom, the promising guy that we got from Sweden, I believe. Um, and he was talked and, about as the Eric Carlson of, of, of the Sweden league. league. Yeah. yeah. So many guys are competing for a spot right now mm -hmm. on this team. I don't know if we have the ability to sign a guy like Party yeah. and make room for him. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, Maybe he's yeah. a guy that would get that would work really well with Pizik. Yeah. And maybe there might be. Some I, I'm, there. I'm just thinking, you know. Yeah, I'm just throwing it out there, just like even if he plays like only like 10, 20 games, you know what I mean? At least you have someone like that there. I guess. If you don't want to have Makojin sitting out every game, you know. Under 20 days away from opening night. Um, you got your jersey. You got, got, my, snazzy. got my Yager jersey. Oh, it's beautiful. That is a nice jersey. Timeless jersey. You, I can wear this 20 years from now, and it'll be relevant. So. Yeah. You'll be like, oh yeah, he was on the Panthers. <laughs> yeah. That legend, right? We have great goalies right now, and that is. We, first off, we got Luongo, who I think gives us two or three good years. Then we got Reimer, who's going to come in and do about two more years for us. If this all goes according to plan, Reimer is a necessary piece to bridge that gap between Luongo and what a lot of Panthers fans are hoping is our goalie of the future, Montebol. Samuel Montebal. So oh, he he's, looks great at training camp. Yeah, he looks great way. at training camp, and he's going to learn a lot uh, under Mike McKenna. Uh, I don't know where Red O'Bara slots in. Um, I guess they were expecting something different. I'm I don't know if it was worth it to have him. But um, anyway, our goalie situation is pretty deep right now. We got five goalies. What I, what I wanted to bring up was uh, the terrible loss um, of Dave Boland is no longer with us. Yeah, I think we had, a, we had a lot of good times with uh, Dave Boland. Sometimes his rat-like face was not exactly what you wanted, but it's what you needed. He had the, he had the intangibles. We'll miss you, Dave. I think um, I think we can move on. All right, so we went on Twitter. We asked for some pucking questions, and now we're gonna puck and answer them. We got our first question we're from. We're still saying that stuff. Yeah, we are. We got our first question from <laughs> Tricky Nikki B. Is Yager going to finally slow down? And if so, who do you guys think is gonna take his spot on the top line? I can't see a time where he's not gonna be good in the NHL. I, I don't. You know, you just watch him out there, and he just knows what to do. You know what I mean? And, I mean, he's going to be 44, turning 45 this season. I, I, I don't think he's going to slow down. I think he's going to put up just about the same numbers, especially playing with Barkov and, and Huberto. Yeah. Even if he slows down a little bit, just being on the line with them, it, it, it helps him. You know what I mean? He's okay. still strong. He did work out a lot this offseason. He got slimmer. He got quicker. His words. Yeah. I mean, he's just ready for another season. I think I think you're right that I don't think he's going to slow down this season. I don't think so. But next season, um, maybe you might start seeing the effects of his age. We haven't seen it yet. Well, uh, that's what I'm saying. Did, just, if you watch the um, Florida about, Panthers versus Islanders, he hit a wall completely. The thing is, I I don't know. Maybe it's because he had the all-star break in the middle of the year that he didn't want. He wanted that break yeah. where he could kind of have some time. And but he didn't get that were, break, and it hurt. Yeah. And also, the they were putting like the same people on him, and they were just yeah. hounding him the whole time. Yeah. And it was in overtime. The the slowest moments of his were always in overtime. And if you actually look at the analytic numbers, Yager was actually the best in the playoffs in the first round, analytic-wise. Like, Corsi 4, mm -hmm. he, the puck was mostly on their stick when he was on the ice, actually. Okay. So, he just wasn't putting up points. For whatever reason why he can't score in the playoffs, we don't know. Yeah. But. <laughs> Do you think Yager's going to slow down? Yeah, he will a little bit. This season? Yeah, okay. a little bit. Okay. You think he'll have less than 66 points? Yeah. I like Bukestad there. Yeah? Yeah. 
Okay. I think he would work with them. See, that's and that's then my you can And then that's McCann, the thing. It would be easy to yeah. just slide McCann right over and then bring up someone like Malgan, Harluck, Hunt, Rao, anyone in Harla. that inner line in the bottom six, you know what I mean? If we take Bukestad and we put him on, the, if he gets used to it, that's a right-handed shot on the uh, top line. I think there's a lot of benefits to that. Also, those are those are always been the big three on our team, the big three forwards that our team has been built around. Bukestad, right. Barkov, mm -hmm. Huberto on the same top line. It could be very effective. That's what they were probably gunning for down the road anyways. An important uh, yeah. characteristic of the top line right now is the fact that they cycle the puck, they protect the puck well. If you can get a guy like B Bigstad, Bukestad, Big <laughs> Bigstad, if he can be able to protect the puck and he can work on that line, cycle the puck well, that could work very well. I'm actually really in favor of, uh, of moving him from center position. Last year, he kind of faltered a bit in the center spot, and guess who passed him? Trocek. That could be an insane line if it clicks. We got a question from Sun Puck, host of blog called Puck Under the Sun, and he asks, Thoughts on the Ekblad injury at the World Cup of Hockey? We kind of touched on this earlier. It, it's bad. He got another concussion. I mean, that's his third. But he's gonna, yeah, but but he, it was mild. But uh, all I'm saying is that he should be ready to start yeah. the season. So I'm 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 okay. Yeah. You know what I mean? What are you gonna do? The World Cup. Honestly, I was watching. It was very fun to watch. Love North it. America was one of the most fun hockey teams I've ever watched yeah. in my life. But I mean, the whole time I was watching it. All I was hoping was don't injure a Panther. Yep. We had Barkov, Jokinen, Trocek, and Ekblad there. Yeah. And I was just hoping none of them got hurt. And I mean, I'm happy. I guess they're all eliminated. So they're coming back to Florida and Ekblad should start the season. So I'm happy. John Yap asks, who do you think grabs the two spots alongside Bukestad on the third line? Oh, um, well, now, we already talked about that. We talked about that a McCann, bit. McCann, Sevier, Marcheseau. Yeah. Look at those players to probably be there. Alex is going with uh, Sevier. I'm going with Marcheseau on that third line with McCann. I think we both Maybe agree. even Rao. McCann should be up there. You um, could even see Marcheseau and Sevier be on the fourth line with, with McKenzie and see Rao, McCann, and Bukestad up there on the third line. Who knows, you know? I think it's going to be McCann, Bukestad, Marcheseau on the third line. And Marcheseau proved that he can score by playing with the Tampa Bay Lightning. He, uh, he was a productive guy. I think he'd play well with uh, Bukestad. Anyway, from the Pucking Panthers podcast, I hope you enjoyed watching. Uh, I'm Taylor Craig. I'm Ryan Keelan. I'm Alex Suisa. Hopefully you subscribe, follow us on Twitter, do whatever, share the video, comment below what you think about some of our uh, answers to your questions. Hate it, subtweet us, anything you want, <laughs> doesn't matter. I'm Taylor Craig. I'm Ryan Keelan. I'm Alex Suisa. And we'll see you again soon.